Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number three for chapter five and the topic of this chapter is the Laplace transform. So in previous videos we um, introduced the definition of the Laplace transform and uh, looked at um, examples of computing the Laplace transform per definition. In this video, we will be focusing on properties of this transform okay. um, with um, short proofs for each of the properties. So the first property is uh, linearity of the transformation. So this is a linear transform, which means that Laplace transform of a constant times a function f t plus a constant c2 times a function g t will equal to, um, you can break this up into two Laplace transforms and you can pull out the constant outside the Laplace transform. Okay, So this property is typically an, a linear property. Now the proof is um, simply done by definition. There's nothing tricky here. So let's just go through this. So the Laplace transform of this, write out the definition, is this integral with this function in here. And then what one can do, well, we know that if the integral shall exist, then I can um, break this into two integrals, one for the first term e times this function and the other for the second term e times this function. And also um, I can pull out the constant outside in front of the integral sign because I'm integrating in t. And then here I can pull out c2. Then you see um, clearly that this integral is the Laplace transform of f and this integral is the Laplace transform of g. Okay, so um, this property holds for any choices of constants c1 and c2. Okay, so this is rather a um, straightforward property. It basically follows from the property that the integration is a linear um, process. Okay, the second property is more interesting. It regards um, the derivatives. So Laplace transform of the derivative f prime of t equals to s times the Laplace transform of f minus kind of a, a initial condition f evaluated at zero. And furthermore, you can take um, one more derivative the Laplace transform of the second derivative becomes s squared times Laplace transform of f and then a few turns at the zero, so minus s times f of zero and minus f prime of zero. And then there is a, a general form for the derivatives. If you are nth derivative of f, you want the Laplace transform and it equals to s to the power n of Laplace transform of f and then minus a bunch of terms of the value of f or the f derivative at zero. So it's s to the n minus one f zero minus all the way down to s to the power one of f to the n minus two derivative at zero minus the last term is f to the n minus one derivative at zero. So put in the remark about the importance of these properties. So these properties are particularly useful in dealing with differential equations because um, our equations involve derivatives of the function. And one sees that um, each derivative of a function f in the end um, results in a multiplication of s in the um, Laplace transform function. So it transforms a derivative into a algebraic multiplication. 
then um, which you will see soon later we will take Laplace transform of the differential equation then the differential equation will change into an algebraic equation okay and let's try to give a brief proof um, let's begin with the first derivative so Laplace transform of f prime by definition write out equal to this expression where we put f prime and then um, we can do an integration by parts so the integration by parts gives me e times f evaluated from 0 to infinity minus and then um, I will keep the f and I will differentiate this which gives me negative s e to the negative st times ft okay so if I evaluate t equal to 0 to plus infinity I see that when t is infinity it's 0 provided s is bigger than 0 and then when t is 0 this is 1 this is f0 so I get negative f0 and then the second turn I see that I can move the negative s outside because I'm integrating in t so I get s once this is moved out the integral is exactly the Laplace transform of f so I get that and that's exactly the formula okay so once we have the expression for the first derivative formula then for the second derivative we can just iterate on that and uh, we can think that the function replace the function uh, f by f prime and then this will be the um, Laplace transform of f double prime is the Laplace transform of the derivative of f prime and then this becomes the Laplace transform of uh, f prime times s minus f prime at zero so that's just simply using this property for the function f prime and then um, the Laplace transform of f prime here then we can use this property directly and um, put it in this for that so we'll get s times in the bracket the Laplace transform of f prime which is an s of Laplace transform of f t and minus f zero okay and then one can um, distribute this s into both terms and write it as s square Laplace transform of f and then minus s times f zero and then f prime zero which is exactly the formula for the um, second derivative okay and then one can repeat this process and uh, use a simple induction we'll get the nth derivative which I do not go through the detail you can try it by yourself it's the same idea okay so um, one thing to um, um, keep your attention is here that um, the derivative Laplace transform of a derivative of the function in the end will pick up terms of the value of f at t equals 0 or an f derivative at t equals 0 and in fact all the lower derivatives if you look at the Laplace transform of f to the nth derivative so it um, will take into consideration like the initial condition at t equals 0 okay so property number three is uh, about the derivative of the transform so if now f of s is the Laplace transform of little f of t then the f prime of s would equal to the Laplace transform of negative t times f of t okay so um this looks similar doesn't it in fact let me put a remark so this property is actually the counterpart for the previous property number two here it shows that each derivative in s for the capital f of s would correspond to 
a multiplication of negative t um, in the um, original function. Okay, so here I say the inverse, well, later it will come, but that means the original function that you are taking Laplace transform from. Okay, so a second remark is uh, we can use the linear property of the Laplace transform. We can take the negative sign outside and then move it to the right hand side. Then we'll have Laplace transform of a function t times f of t will be negative capital F prime of s. And that can be very useful also. Okay, so the proof follows directly from the definition. So f prime of s would be this integral here, take derivative d over ds. And then since this is the only function that has s, then we just need to um, differentiate this in s. So um, when we differentiate this in s, we think t is a constant. So it gives me negative t e to the negative st, ft dt. And then we see that um, this integral here is uh, e to the negative st times negative t ft dt. And that is exactly the Laplace transform of negative t times f of t. Okay, so um, as you see, all these proofs are basically comes directly from the definition by differentiating integration by parts. Also, nothing um, difficult. Okay, next property number four. I this is um, I call this shift theorem number one. So it says that. Um, if f of s is the Laplace transform of f of t, then the Laplace transform of exponential function e a t times f t equal to the capital F of s minus a. So this is called a shift theorem, um, meaning that um, the multiplication of an exponential function on f of t corresponds to a shift of the same amount a here in the transformed function. Okay. So a quick remark, um, since we call this shift theorem 1, this is hinting that later there is a counterpart, shift theorem 2, that will come in this chapter. Okay, the proof also follows just from definition. And Laplace transform of this function here, if we write it out directly, it's this one. So that's the function and that's the integration kernel. And then we can combine the two um, exponential function here and write it as negative s minus a t and then f of t dt. And then this is exactly the Laplace transform of the function f of t, but not evaluated at s, but evaluated s minus a. Okay, so um, let's um, conclude this video with a summary of the properties that we have so far. So let's review. So the first is a linear property. and. Uh, the second property is about derivatives. We have a first derivative, second derivative, and uh, any derivative. Okay, it uh, looks a bit complicated, but it's actually not. And then the third one is a counterpart of the second property. The derivative is on the transform function. And then property four is shift theorem number one, which says multiply f function by an exponential result in a shift of the transformed function. Okay, so um, now these properties actually um, in the end are very useful. So immediate application would be I can use these properties and I can more easily find Laplace transforms of many other functions. So um, these will be the topic of the next video.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time.